My best friend physically attacked me because of his feelings for my girlfriend. English not my first language, also I'm a mess and on strong painkillers. So me 27 male and Mark 26 male have been best friends since we were 16 years old. We bonded over both wanting the same career path. After years of struggling and tons of rejection, my career for the past year has finally been taking off, while Mark's has not. I've spent so much time trying to help him, also this past year trying to encourage and help him. We even lived together as roommates from ages 20 to 23 and shared everything. But about six months ago, his attitude towards me changed. He started making me the butt of his jokes, saying belittling and demeaning things. I'm, or I was, kind of a happy-go-lucky type of guy. And I just brushed it off, thinking he was just a little jealous and having a hard time and was understanding of his situation. I get it, it's a harsh environment to want to work in with tons of rejections, and seeing your friends suddenly get the success you have always dreamt of. And then there is my now ex-girlfriend Emily 26 female. I thought we had the perfect relationship, together five and a half years. Good communication, good intimate life. She stood by me all these rough years trying to get ahead in this career path. I'm also a big oversharer and love to talk to her about everything, we had no secrets and were very honest, or so I thought. I always made effort to keep the relationship fresh and fun, date nights about twice a week, surprise her with gifts, trips, trying to do new things together, cooking classes, dance classes. I just loved sharing experiences with her, even indulged in her hobbies. Made sure she knew she was my number one person, and I thought I felt the same from her. Even as my career took off, I made sure not to prioritize her any less or any of my friends. I need a good work-life balance to feel happy. Then last week, we were all at our friend's house, Tom and Katie, both 27, at a house they recently bought. We were sitting in their yard drinking, along with Bill 26 male and Jane 27 female, we have been a friend group for 7 years. So we are all drinking, and Mark gets drunk pretty quick, and all night he is taking these jabs at me and saying things. And after six months of this, I just had enough. The others also told him to take it down a notch, as he tried to disguise these comments as jokes, but he was just being hurtful and rude. But around midnight, a little drunk, I just had enough and call him out, which ends in an argument, and I end up saying, thinking this all stems from his jealousy of my recent success, that it's not my fault he doesn't have the talent to make it, and mention all I've tried doing for him so he could get opportunities as well. Then he just attacks me, we shove each other a bit, but he manages to knock me down, kicks me in the ribs a couple of times, then he tries to stomp on the head. Luckily he doesn't hit me full force. I feel the sole of his feet hit my cheek and slip off, but it was hard enough that my face is still swollen. Then he does it again, but I moved and just see his heel land full force inches from my face. He could have broken my skull, or worse killed me, had he landed on my head. Then the other guys get in between. I stand up and yell if he is crazy. He seems to be walking off, but he picks up a wooden plank that Tom and Katie had around as they are redoing the fence and building a shed in the garden. Then he lunges at me again and swings it towards my head. I kind of duck and put my hand up so he hits my elbow pretty hard. Again he could have unalived me two times in a matter of seconds. He almost hit Jane with the swing too, so all hell breaks loose and Tom and Bill jump him and beat him up pretty bad as they were just seeing red from what happened. The girls manage to get them off mark and they kind of realize what they did. It's just emotional chaos at this point, and we are all kind of in shock. Mark sits up, and Emily sits with him and there is a lot of blood in his face but he didn't lose consciousness. Katie ends up driving Mark to the hospital and gets back in the morning. Mark had a broken nose and a slight concussion, and she dropped him off at his parents. She said Mark didn't really talk to her, nor explain himself or even apologize. None of us really slept that night, and honestly after that, things are a bit blurry to me. Probably a mix of alcohol, shock and adrenaline and the worst night of my life. But it just got worse. You might have noticed I haven't mentioned Emily for a while. We are sitting around, and Tom says something like Mark deserved worse than a broken nose for trying to end me twice and almost hurting Jane. Then Emily, who has been quiet, suddenly snaps and defended Mark, saying he doesn't deserve any of this and that he just has been having a hard time. Tom and Emily almost end up in a screaming match before Emily storms off. I follow her, thinking, okay we are all in shock and sleep deprived and plan to comfort her. I find her in the guest room crying. I tell her I understand and we are in shock and maybe we should just try to get some sleep. She doesn't even look at me and suddenly I realize Mark and Emily were sitting next to each other the previous evening, not the first time. When Mark was screaming at me, Emily was by his side, tugging at his arm pleading him to take a walk with her and calm down. To Mark, not me. After Mark kicked me, stomped on me, swung a plank at me, her attention was still on calming him down. While I laid down in pain, she didn't even check on me. 
When the guys were beating Mark, she was screaming in hysterics trying to pull them off him. I don't even remember her asking me once if I was okay all night. So I ask her, are you cheating on me with Mark? And she just starts crying hysterically and repeating she never intended for it to go this far. And I got my answer and I just lost it and start yelling at her what is going on and how she can do this. The others come in and the guys take me to another room and try to calm me down. Jane and Katie end up driving Emily to her parents and Jane ends up staying with her as apparently they were worried about her. All the car ride she cried so much she couldn't speak. When they got to her parents, Jane and Emily's dad had to help her up the stairs and into bed as she barely stood up as she was just in hysterics still. And the only thing she managed to say or scream according to them was that she had ruined everything. So Jane stayed as her parents were worried sick and never seen her like this. Jane and Katie told them what had happened with Mark and me and it seemed to stem from Mark and Emily's affair. Then five days pass. I'm just in so much physical and emotional pain. Just so angry and confused. My elbow has a fracture, got a couple of bruised ribs and the right side of my face swollen. The night is on repeat in my head. I sent Emily some texts asking for an explanation, but she didn't answer. Then this morning I get a call from my her mother and bless their heart, my former in-laws are amazing people and always been so kind to me and helped my though a lot these past years. She is very apologetic for her daughter and is very understanding. Then she says that Emily wants to see me and talk and if I could come over, which I agreed to. I arrive and they say they will go outside and wait in their car to give us space, but because of the state Emily is in, they don't want to leave the premise. I walk in and when I see Emily, it's a roller coaster of emotion, anger and bitterness. Then I felt sorry for her and just wanted to hug her, she looked awful, like a mental patient. Like she hadn't eaten, showered or slept since that night. I just felt so bad seeing her like that and had to restrain myself not to run over and take her in my arms. So I just sat down facing her. She said I could ask her anything and she would be honest, and kept repeating how sorry she is and that she has ruined everyone's lives. I'm not gonna go into too much details as this is long enough, but basically a year ago, Mark confessed his love for Emily and has been very persistent since then. She said she made it clear it wasn't mutual. I asked why she didn't come to me and she says she didn't want to ruin our friendship and wanted to fix things. Then these last months he has become more aggressive, asking her to leave me for him. I asked if anything had happened. She said they kissed twice and Mark initiated both times but she stopped it. And they once cuddled over a movie that Mark tried to initiate X and then she left and set clear boundaries. I asked why she kept seeing him alone if he was constantly trying to kiss her and get her into bed and she said he always promised he wouldn't do it again. I asked why she didn't cut contact, why she kept answering his DMs, kept meeting him, giving him false hope and leading him on if she liked his attention. Then she said the strangest thing, that she felt bad for him, felt sorry for him, felt protective of him like she was his big sister or some nonsense, and that she needed to help him get over her, that she even set him up on a date with a friend, which he sabotaged by being a jerk to the girl. I asked her if she was stupid. If she was telling the truth, she did nothing but keep his hope and crush for her alive, by keep giving him all her time. She started crying and doubled down on having a sister-brother relationship with him and wanting to fix everything and that he was just having a hard time and she wanted to help him to get on his feet again. But he kept getting more persistent and started talking about me in a bad way and that I didn't deserve her. She says she regrets everything and said she was just stupid and had ruined everything and dealt with everything in the worst way possible but that she did it in good faith not realizing she was just making things worse. Then I ask her if she has had any contact with him since that night, and she takes this awkward pause before starting bawling her eyes out and saying yes. That just destroyed me, completely ruined me. This man, for over a year tried to get with her, tried to end me, and I wait five days for her to answer me, only for her mother to call me on her behalf, and meanwhile she is texting with him. I couldn't answer, I just felt like hurting her. Not physically, but emotionally, so I decided to just get up and go. She pleads with me, offers to show me the texts, saying she just checked if he was okay, and then the discussion went to her telling him it's over and to stop contacting her. But for me she made her choice. I was in the worst pain in my life these last five days because of them, and she still choose to continue to talk to him while I was on my own. I walk out with her following me pleading, and I'm not proud of this, but her mom and dad get out of the car and ask if everything is alright, and I just lost it. I yell that their c-word of a daughter has ruined my life. How she could choose the man who tried to stomp on my face over me. I was so angry I couldn't even drive so I just start walking away. I don't know for how long I was walking, but my ex's dad drives next to me, tells me to get in. Which I do, expecting him to yell in me or tell me off. But bless his heart, he just drives me home. We didn't talk all the way, but when he stopped outside of my place, he put his hand on my shoulder. 
I couldn't even look him in the face after what I said to them. Emily did text me screenshot of their texts which seems to prove what she said, that she only checked if he was okay and then said she couldn't keep him in his life, that she would never forgive him for attacking me. She also sent more screenshots of their previous chats, mostly of her telling him to stop, that she didn't have feelings for him, and of her rejecting his advances. But as they have been talking for over a year, I guess she could cherry-pick parts of the conversations that look in her favor and leave other parts of texts out. I have not responded yet and I don't think I ever will. I will block her, but for some reason I just can't yet. Now I'm here just getting this all out of me. I just feel so betrayed and angry and horrible. I want to hurt Emily and Mark so bad, not in a violent way, just emotionally. Make them feel the pain I'm feeling. And I know that's not a healthy way to feel, or a healthy thing to do, so I hope just writing this out, even if no one reads this, will help me start to process what the hell has happened. How my life went from feeling perfect, to feeling like I will never feel good again. I feel like this pain will never go away. How on earth can someone heal from this? I feel like I lost everything. The people I used to love with all my heart, I feel nothing but hatred for now. I know Emily said she didn't cheat as in slept with him, which I doubt because I'm not stupid. Even if they didn't, she still betrayed me on so many levels, as did Mark. I don't think I will ever forgive them. I don't feel like I will ever get in a place where I would even consider trying to. So to anyone who has ever been through a betrayal like this from partners or friend or both, what is my next step? How can I do to begin the process to just stop thinking about this and just start trying to live my life again? Now for the top advice. How on earth can someone heal from this? You go no contact and get therapy to help you process your grief over being betrayed by two people you trusted, one of which tried to end you. It's almost a meme on Reddit to always recommend therapy, but in your case, you know the relationship with Emily is broken beyond repair, and what you're specifically struggling with is all the horrible emotions that you now have to process, manage, and heal from. This is exactly the sort of problem therapy is meant to help you heal from. I'd also consider filing charges against Mark, for obvious reasons. I also can't emphasize enough how much you should not work things out with Emily, but I would recommend writing her parents a letter apologizing for your behavior. They were good to you, you feel bad about what you said to them, and apologizing is the right thing to do. The letter is a good idea, I will definitely do the in the next few days when my head is a little clearer, they don't deserve to be caught in the middle of this. And yeah, I think therapy might be good idea. I've talked about this with the others in the friend group, but I find it hard, it might help to talk to a professional to dig deeper. As for filing charges, that has been brought up as well, and all of them have said they would testify on my behalf and tell what happened. And a part of me wants to do it just to hurt Mark, but another part of me just wants this to be over and never see him again. Hun, he tried to cave your skull and after trying to knob your now ex-girlfriend for a year, and now she's supposedly cut contact after this, which dubious if she'll stick to that, do you really want to risk him trying again? If he feels he's lost his chance or has nothing to lose, he could very well escalate. Please don't put yourself at risk by ignoring that, at the very least making the report will be useful if tries to claim you attacked him or start stalking you after this. Please go the police, you don't know what he might try to do now. Well, Mark and Emily are both trash. Mark has obviously been jealous of you for a while. You should definitely block both of them and move on with your life. Emily is playing trickle truth. First it was just talking, then he tries to kiss her but nothing else happened. Her actions after he attacked you tell you all you need to know. She ran to check on him, she defended his actions to your friends, she texted to make sure he was okay after ignoring your calls. This woman does not deserve you. Mark is a walking disaster, he is what she deserves, leave them to it. I promise you will find someone better. Right now, you're likely focusing on the amount of time you've known these people, which makes it harder to walk away. You didn't know the real Mark or Emily, you knew the people they pretended to be. The masks are now off, and what you see is what you will get. Also, it sounds like there are clues that Mark hasn't been your friend for a while. I would suggest some self-reflection on why you chose stick around for his mistreatment. I wish you all the best. Do not turn to alcohol. When you feel restless, hit the gym or take a walk. Thank you for the response. I will take time to do a lot of self-reflecting. I want to come out of this all as a stronger and better person, but it will be a long and hard road to take I guess. And for the alcohol, honestly since alcohol was involved when it happened, it feels kind of like a part of the trauma and I have no longing for it. Hope it stays that way, but will definitely be wary of it. Maybe the longing will come when I stop on the painkillers, but I need to face this head on and sober. We all have that internal voice that tells us when something is not right. You knew Mark was not joking, he was being passive aggressive. After the first few interactions, a conversation should have happened to find out the problem, or you should have ended the friendship. 
You went out of your way to help Mark with his stall career, and he still chose to not only betray you, but to assault you. Some people do not know how to receive kindness, sadly you cannot fix them. Yes you're right. I think in a way I still had hopes his career would turn around soon, and everything would fall back into place. I also was judging from my own perspective of watching people around me get all the opportunities, and feeling slightly bitter. Although I never expressed it, I just thought that was what was happening. But yes, I should have confronted him sooner. 